hello it's Grace I hope you're all doing well welcome back to my channel and welcome to the start of a new vlog today it is the 29th 28th of November um so it's not quite December but I as of today I'm in full Christmas mode I have like a gateway Christmas jumper on and then when it hits the 1st of December I'll be in full Christmas jumpers and this week as I begin to do all of the Christmassy things I want to read Christmas themed books so that is what we're going to do and I thought I would talk you through some of the books I'm going to be reading this week I might have one or two more that appear throughout the week but I have quite a stack of what are quite short books which I think could be good for this first I have um Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons so I read Cold Comfort Farm in November and this is like short stories I think um kind of about Cold Comfort Farm but set around Christmas or like little moments so I just thought that would be really like cute and nice to return to that that's probably like the longest one I have um this is tiny but Adam K is the ex-junior doctor who wrote this is going to hurt which is his memoir which I absolutely loved gave five stars read it a couple of years ago recommend it all the time um, and this came out last year and it's just like a little extra um, of some of his diaries from when he worked Christmas shifts so I think this is just going to be really funny take me probably like an hour to read if that but yeah I love him then kind of rogue for me I picked up um some poetry so this is by Maya Angelou and this is celebrations rituals of peace and prayer um, and it's kind of like a collection of yeah some poems that kind of are all about advocating for peace I don't know I just thought it sounds quite interesting again super super short I really want to I haven't actually read Maya Angelou's like non-fiction um, which I really want to get to uh, but yeah I just thought that was if I felt in the mood for some poetry why not then I have um, I'm really excited about this Hercule Poirot's Christmas by Agatha Christie I'm a massive Agatha Christie fan and Poirot's are my favourite and yeah this is like a Poirot novel at Christmas and again this is more like a proper book size but how exciting when I'm getting all Christmassy this week to like snuggle up with a good thriller and return to Poirot who is my fave and then finally for now I have The Deal of a Lifetime by Frederick Bachman again this is like a really short novella I think this is going to be quite emotional as all of his books are so I started filming this today rather than like actually on the 1st of December because today is the day that we're going to go get our Christmas tree because the 1st of December is a Tuesday um and I have a job and so does Alex so yeah we're gonna go now and get our Christmas tree some apparently they're selling them like on the seafront like a literally like two minute walk from our house um so yeah we're gonna go and check that out now <laughs> really love it this is the first time I've ever had a real tree so I'm really really excited about it and um, I have some more baubles coming annoyingly that aren't arriving till Thursday so it's looking like a tad sparse but very cute very festive let it be known that in every vlog clip from now on I will be just like subtly getting the tree in the background uh it's now Saturday night I have had a curry that was delicious. I'm going to start reading Twas the Night Shift Before Christmas by Adam Kay. I feel like I didn't actually say... Have I got chocolate on my teeth? Like I didn't actually say what the title of the book was before. And yeah, really excited to read this in the mood for something like fun and funny. Although also it, the last book like destroyed me at the end. It was like the most I've ever cried at a book. Hopefully this one won't do that. Me reading Twas the Night Shift Before Christmas is literally like, ooh ah ha, ha, ha. oh ah it's like very bodily disgusting because it's about like because it's about like you know hospital admissions but it's so funny i love adam k good morning um i got dressed this morning and i had on like a black turtleneck and my jeans and my chain and then i had to get changed because i realized i was dressed exactly like that picture of the rock um, and it was actually disturbing me when I looked in the mirror. Anyway, last night I finished reading Twas a Night Shift Before Christmas and I absolutely loved it. Gave it five stars. Not surprisingly, I think Adam Kay is just like, his humour is like pitch perfect for me. I genuinely found it so, so funny. But it's also really well balanced with some more serious stuff, I guess, about the NHS and about the pressures it's under and 
you know, being a doctor and what that kind of, the things you see and come across. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I looked on Goodreads when I was writing it, just at the one star reviews, because sometimes I like to argue with people in my head and they were really making me laugh because people were like, um, just seems like short piece together bit. It's like, that is literally exactly what this is and has been advertised as. I would really recommend it. I think it's a good little stocking filler for anyone who enjoyed the first book. We're now gonna, ooh, I love this bauble. Which one's my favorite? This boy. We're gonna make some mulled wine, which I'm really excited about. And then we're gonna make gingerbread. So yeah, super festive. So our gingerbread children are in the oven. I hope they are as tasty as they look. And while waiting for them to cook, I thought I might read, because these are like short stories as far as I'm aware, one or two stories from Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm. You'll have seen me wrap up Cold Comfort Farm recently. And yeah, it's a strange book. It wasn't quite what I was expecting, but there's so many like funny, weird characters. I feel like I'd like to see them get up to Christmas hijinks. So let's do that. Good morning. Uh, I thought I'd show you. I got some post. It was quite funny, actually. Uh, this package arrived on Friday and I was like, oh, I haven't ordered anything. And it felt like books and it was like hand addressed. And I'm in two secret Santas that we're doing like postally. And I was like, oh, surely that's a bit early. But I was like, I don't want to open it in case it is. So Alex opened it and he was like, it's two books, but there's no note or anything. And I was like, must be a secret Santa. And then I couldn't sleep at all last night. I was up from like 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Fun. And it just came to me that Kieran was sending me books because I'm an idiot and he was sending me I'm so excited Luster by Raven Lalani which came from CJ because it's not out in the UK yet so CJ sent it to Kieran who's read it and now I get it and I'm so excited CJ loved it Jay also loved it I think Kieran enjoyed it I'm not sure if he's posted his full review in the group chat yet but yeah really excited about that and then he also included um this book which is still aside yeah need to read the blurb and see what this is actually about but how nice and I'm so excited to read Lester. I also never revealed my gingerbread men last night. Here they are. So cute. Um, mine are the ones that are just better and neater than Alex's. Look at this guy with his little tie on. So cute. I'm gonna eat one today. Um, yeah, I also read like two stories from Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm. The first one was nothing to do with the characters of Cold Comfort Farm. The second one was called Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm. So was, but it was like pre all the action of Cold Comfort Farm. And therefore, I don't know, I didn't love it, to be honest. Yeah, so I'll have to see how my motivation goes with continuing to pick that up, as I don't think it's quite what I expected it to be. So I'll probably read something else today and then return later in the week. So when I said I needed to read the blurb and find out what that still aside book is about, turns out I didn't. All I needed to do was watch Kieran's vlog and he's done it for me. It'll take place to like half a day for the fact that I'm going to read something maybe even like she could probably smash us in like an hour um a Britain where water is commodified so I went for a walk with my boss uh and it was wow um this hat is actually soaking wet it was really sunny nice day there was a beautiful rainbow over the sea that I'll insert a clip of oh my god and then as you may have noticed it started to rain what I've got like matted, haggard hair, mascara all down my face, and the piece de resistance on uh, my feet. So I have dried off, but I am absolutely chilled to the bone, not gonna lie. The tree lights are on and have a little glass of red wine. I know it's Monday, but I just got some really, really unexpected and exciting news to do with work that I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share, but I will find out and then hopefully tell you. Um, so I've decided that I want to snuggle up and read something that's going to warm my cockles. And I think the answer to that is Deal of a Lifetime by Frederick Bachman. Uh, I filmed my November wrap up and I was thinking about how anxious people just wasn't quite it for me. I did really like it. Um, 
but Bear Town was just like so amazing for me and that made me really in the mood to read him and because this is so short and I think it's going to be like quite emotional um yeah it might just be the one also like it kind of looks like my tree um also side note you will have seen my November wrap-up yeah um remind me never to read 20 books in a month again and not do a mid-month wrap-up honestly by the end of that video I was like am I making sense it's literally 65 pages so don't think it's going to take me too long good morning it is the first of December and I'm wearing a Christmas jumper it's from ASOS I absolutely love it um I'm gonna open my advent calendar which is a Maltesers one here he is Mm, breakfast chocolate it's the best chocolate speaking of advent calendars if you watched um last week's vlog i had said that i got alex an advent calendar like a homemade one so i was getting him like a little present every day so today first of december first day and kind of a cynical way but i promise it is actually a nice present and not just selfish i got him a copy of a christmas carol um this really nice like penguin cloth bound copy but it also occurs to me that that kind of fits in with this video so i actually think i'm gonna read it this week potentially today before him yeah great present buying from me there very smart a little reindeer in the background also last night i read the deal of a lifetime by frederick bachman um it wasn't quite what i was expecting i'd heard that it was about like a father and a son at christmas so i thought and like reuniting so i thought it was going to be like potentially emotional but quite like heartwarming and like nice um it's pretty depressing well i always feel like when i say well i always feel like that kombucha girl meme where she's like well mm, mm. um there's like a little author's note from back when at the start and he's like yeah this is kind of like a weird little story soz it's very much about death i would say it was kind of emotional um but yeah not quite they like uplifting it wasn't festive let's say that didn't have any like cheery christmas spirit at all um but it took me about 15 minutes to read and i liked it because it was bachman like more serious which i've said is what i like um but yeah not quite not very festive um so i might i think i'll read this at lunchtime because i know this is going to be festive again kind of depressing mm, well this will definitely be festive i also just love the penguin cloth bounds you're gonna look so good on my bookshelf uh yeah so now i'm gonna do some work Good morning. Uh, as you will have seen, I didn't actually do any reading until yesterday evening, just because I was busy at work. I did read in the evening, um, and I got like halfway through A Christmas Carol. Um, so I've never actually read this before, but obviously. I'm very familiar with this story. I think we all know the story of Christmas Carol. I read like children versions of it as a child, seen all the films, seen all the bad knockoff films. It's only like 80 pages, but I wasn't like loving it. I can't say I was totally vibing with it. And I don't know if that is just because I know the story really well. So I'm just reading for like the writing. And I just don't know if Charles Dickens and me are, are it. But I am obviously going to continue I only got like 40 pages left and I think the key to getting the best experience out of this is going to be to like make it feel Christmassy, make it an immersive Christmassy experience. So last night I was reading this while Alex was watching The Queen's Gambit like next to me loudly. It was quite distracting so I think the recipe to enjoy this is going to be like candles on, tree, potentially some choral music in the background. So yeah I'm not giving up on it uh, but I feel like we've got into a bit of a bad space here in this vlog we need some desperate measures to turn it around so i'm consulting agatha and today i'm going to start reading hercule poirot's christmas because i love agatha christie i love poirot i think this is going to be the thing that i can actually really enjoy also it's the second of december so it's the day of lockdown being over woohoo but now we're in tier three anyway boohoo uh it does mean that like shops and hair salons can open and that means i can go get my nails done so i'm going in today just to get this nail fixed even though this one's also snapped really badly um and then on friday i'm going in to actually get my nails done it means i'm going into town um so i'll probably have a little look around some of the christmasy shop so yeah well, that's the plan sunny day um i just checked on scribd actually and there is Hercule Poirot's Christmas, like the audiobook version on script, which is really handy for when I'm like walking around the shops or walking to the train station. So I've got that and the book and I'm heading into town now. And yeah, I'm really excited actually just to be like going to town, venturing out of the house for the first time in over a month. Hello, 
I'm home now um, and I'm about a third of the way through Hercule Poirot's Christmas and it was exactly what I needed. Uh, I'm enjoying it so much. I listened to most of the audiobook and then read a little bit. Um, it's set at Christmas time in this kind of really rich family's estate and everyone's kind of come home for Christmas. Some of the kind of children, siblings, some of whom are estranged. There's a few new people turning up who they didn't expect. Uh, and it's just a lot of like good, rich family Christie fun. Like there's a change of the will and then someone is murdered on Christmas Eve. And now that they're dead, Poirot has arrived and I just love Poirot so much. Uh, and yeah, it just feels really like cozy and a good fun time. Um, I must shout out the guy who does the audiobooks on Scribd. I think he's called Hugh something. And I've listened to like a lot of Poirot audiobooks and I really like him, but God, he was, he was putting the work in. Within the first scene, he had to do a South African accent and a Spanish girl's accent. Uh, and bless his heart, like he was, really going for it and the main kind of old rich man character in this has just the most hilarious ridiculous accent I've ever heard he basically sounds like Alexander Meerkat you know from Compare the Meerkat it's like that mixed with Gollum he's very much like the diamonds yes so thoroughly enjoying that I also got my nails fixed um it is witchcraft to me really that she managed to attach two nails that had snapped off but I bow down not questioning it just happy even though it does look kind of crazy until Friday. Also wanted to show you a couple of little things that I picked up in town. First of all, I fell into Waterstones. I feel like we've all we've all been there. Um, I was like, I'll just glance. I'll just glance at the buy one get one half price on paperbacks. Um, and I bought two books. I am blaming first one on Jalen from the bar in the bookcase. Um, it's Boy Parts by Liza Clark, which has been on my list for ages. I know so many people, especially over on Bookstagram, have been reading it and loving it. Um, and it's set in Newcastle, which is where I'm from. And the author, Eliza Clark, she actually used to work for like this organization who share office space with us. Um, and yeah, I just, I have really wanted to read it for ages, but I've watched Jay's October and November wrap up this morning, which I'll link below. He talks about so many good books um, and he was just like, why haven't you read this yet? And I took it personally and was like, you're right. So I picked up that. I think it must have just come out in paperback. Then I also picked up The Girl with a Louding Voice by Abby Dare because this, again, has been on my list for a while and it's going to be featuring an upcoming reading vlog that I'm very excited about, but that I won't say what it is yet. So yeah, I was happy with that. You're not meant to buy yourself books in December, but I did. And then I got some stockings. I've ordered some stockings for the flat and particularly because I'm doing this whole like Alex advent calendar thing and I thought it would be cute if like his present was in the stocking every morning and so these are just from Paper Chase um I've got one for myself as well don't know if I'll find any gifts in it but yeah I just thought they were really cute so happy with that speaking of Alex's advent calendar this morning the present was uh like a face mask from this like surfy brand that he likes and I was really pleased with myself and I was like I'll give it to him on the second because we come out of lockdown obviously we didn't really but um yesterday he comes home from work and he's like oh my god this amazing woman called Jane at work um has handmade some Christmas themed masks and she's selling them and the money's going to Alzheimer's research like isn't it so beautiful I love it I'm gonna wear it every day and I was just like thanks Jane you have to upstage me don't you with your beautiful handmade charitable which mine are not face mask and this morning when I gave it to him he's like I did think you were being a bit weird about Jane so yeah you've won Jane finish work now and I'm keen to keep pressing on with Poirot so I'll let you know how far I get tonight good morning um it's actually like pitch black today so I put the tree lights on even though it's nine o'clock in the morning so I finished reading Hercule Poirot's Christmas last night and I absolutely loved it it was so just what i needed i felt like almost it sounds stupid but it'd been like three days since i'd read a novel despite reading like all these kind of shorter or like short stories and like diaries and novella and it made me feel like i was in a bit of like a slump almost because i didn't love any of them i know that sounds stupid anyway love this i actually think it is my favorite poirot Apart from maybe The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, because that is just a classic. Yeah, it was so good. I love the, like, how, like, safe these crime novels feel. They're so kind of cosy. Like, 
at one point, this isn't a spoiler, someone attempts to murder someone else by putting a cannonball on top of their door so that when they open the door, it'll like come off and crush them, which is obviously not safe or cozy, but you know what I mean? It feels really like vintage and just like funny. Um, and yeah, this book was, it was like funny. Poirot's always a bit of a crease. There was just this awful character who kept talking about how he really fancied his niece. And I was just like, Harry bro, like, so yeah, it was just very like good and rompy and fun. And then the actual mystery element, I thought was so, so clever. I mean, I'm not surprised it is Agatha, but yeah, it was just perfect. So clever, like kind of convoluted, but like, like I say, everything in this is a bit dramatic and over the top, but then there'd been like things throughout where I was like, mm, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. And then the ending brought it all together. And I was like, Gracie's such an idiot. You should have guessed it. And yeah, just obsessed with Agatha Christie. I will say it wasn't particularly festive. The murder happens at Christmas, but that does sort of put a stop to all the, uh, Christmas activities they had planned, as it would. But yeah, absolutely love this. Think I'm gonna give it like, it's like a 4.5, potentially even a five. In other news, there was one more thing that I bought in town yesterday and I forgot about it until I went in my bag before. And I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna enjoy it. Look at him! I mean, I mean, stop. Look at that little cutie. And um, obviously it's for a dog. And even then it's a little bit big for him. It's from TK Maxx, cost me like four pounds. I also, I had looked for a jumper, but I was like in TK Maxx looking at these dog jumpers, like trying to work out how that would correspond to his llama legs. And it just felt quite overwhelming. So in the end, I just went for the hat, but I mean. Oh. Hello, so it's lunchtime now. And I think I'm gonna pick up, kind of in the mood for just like a chilled lunchtime. I'm gonna read some poetry. So this is Celebrations by Maya Angelou. It's not technically like a fully Christmas book. So it's basically, a collection of poems from Maya Angelou obviously written for various kind of celebratory occasions around this theme of kind of peace um, and prayer which I think is where the kind of more Christmassy in its original sense element comes in. Um, like I say I'm really interested to read some of Maya Angelou's memoir but I just saw this and it looked really nice and wanted to pick it up and I don't read a huge amount of poetry. I am trying to get into it a bit more. And yeah, this is just quite short. Um, I imagine I'll read it today and yeah, I'll just get started, I think, and I'll let you know how I feel about it. Okay, well, I finished celebrations like I thought didn't take me very long at all. I actually think there's something quite nice about, especially like during the middle of the working day, reading poetry. I don't know, it just felt like quite a meditative experience in a way of kind of like slowing down and reading what is essentially beautiful language. Like I say, very keen to read more from Maya Angelou. It wasn't just Christmas, we had a poem for Oprah's birthday, someone's bar mitzvah, um, but there were a couple there was one specifically about Christmas and then the first poem on the Pulse of Morning, which I really loved, also made me feel quite, I think maybe especially this year where everyone's kind of really missing a sense of community and togetherness and usually like that is kind of what Christmas is for a lot of people. Coming together and you can kind of reflect and, and this sort of like theme of peace that she's talking about. I don't know, it, made, it really did move me actually, especially in that first poem. Um, I also really enjoyed this because Maya Angelou obviously talks a lot about history, um, the history of America, <laughs> allusions to the history of slavery and kind of looking at that and the way that intersects with this peace and community. So yeah, I just think this is a really nice little book, something a bit different, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I'm glad I read it. Also, while I was reading it, the doorbell went and I got a little delivery from Mark and also Spencer. Yeah, it was Mark's and Spencer's order that I'd put in for some baubles and then found out it wasn't gonna come till post tree, but we could do with a few kind of couple more baubles and these are quite nice ones. My favorite bauble smashed this morning. I was so sad. Let's have a look. These are just some cute little like red sparkly ones. Then I absolutely loved the look of these on the website. I'm not sure if you were able to see, they're like iridescent, just like white iridescent baubles and some in green. And then some of these really pretty like glass and gold ones. I've still got some of my lunch break left. So I think I am going to put these on the tree. But also I hung Henry the Hoover on the tree.
Hello, so it's half past, uh, no it's not, five o'clock and Alex is bringing home fish and chips at half past six, which I can't wait for. And I'm going to use that time to read a Christmas carol. I'm going to gosh darn enjoy it this time. Going full Christmas. This is my outfit. Christmas jumper, pyjamas that aren't any Christmassy, leggings underneath because I'm cold, and Christmas socks. Book, Christmas blanket, Christmas tree, glass of red wine. Let's go girls. <laughs> Okay, well, I finished A Christmas Carol and I'll give it to Charlie. Very festive. Did make me feel Christmassy. Not my fave, to be honest. Not my favourite reading experience, I would say. I think just because, like I said, I know the story and Dickens writing just isn't my favourite. I used to say I didn't like descriptive books and I don't think that's true. I don't think I like excessive descriptions of inanimate objects. Like I'm getting a little bit more into nature writing. I like really detailed introspective descriptions about people's kind of emotions however it's a classic you know and I'm glad I've ticked it off the list I won't be um I don't think reaching for any more Charles Dickens anytime soon sorry if that's sacrilege to anyone so I think I'm gonna end the vlog here um I think it's getting a bit long also good question please let me know what you think the optimum vlog time is because I always feel like it should be in the 20 minute mark somewhere um but let me know if you have any thoughts and yeah, obviously I didn't ever come back to Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm, but I think I'm just going to dip in and out of that throughout the month of December um, because, you know, I'm not good with the short stories and I don't think like forcing myself to power through it would be the best, but it's this kind of thing that I might just pick up occasionally when I want to feel Christmassy. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. I hope I've made you feel festive. I know some people don't kind of get Christmassy until much further into December, but in this hellfire of the air. You gotta do what you gotta do. I've had a fun time. Thank you very much for watching. Obviously, I would love if you subscribe to my Instagram. My Goodreads are linked down below as usual, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.